So we live in a 57 foot narrow boat um, that we purchased after selling the house. We travel the canal and river networks of the UK with our dog Dexter. We just wanted a bit of adventure in our lives and we thought this was the answer for us. The amount of things that we've done already in less than two years has just been fantastic and we really feel like we are getting that adventure and every day almost feels like a holiday. So we've lived on the boat for 19 months now. Mm. We are full-time liverboards. We, the first two winters we did stay in a marina. The second one we shortened that time. Um, so we're out longer on the cut and um, we absolutely loved it. So this year we don't actually think we're going to go into a marina at all. But we're glad we did go into a marina because we made lifelong friends. We try and travel as much as we can. And when you have a Canal and River Trust license, you're allowed to stay in most places for two weeks unless there's signs to indicate otherwise. We've tried to travel the whole northwest of the UK, haven't we, but still be quite close to work. There are nearly 3,000 miles of canal network in the United Kingdom that you can navigate if you've got a narrow boat. So a narrow boat, by definition, is no wider than 6 foot 10. They all have flat bottoms. Um, they're not seafaring vessels like a ship. Most of the canals were dug out by hand and they're not very deep, so it makes sense to have a flat bottom boat. The UK has such an extensive network of canals because um, during the Industrial Revolution it was a way of transporting goods, so raw materials to factories, so coal, steel, but also sort of fine goods like pottery. When we looked initially at moving on to a narrowboat, we sort of used to go down the canals with a dog, it was like our favourite place to walk. And we, we kept looking at narrowboats and wondering like what sort of people lived in there, what they looked like inside. And we got chatting to this lady and she said she'd sold a house, bought a narrowboat and it was the best thing she'd ever done. So we started looking online and we were quite surprised what you do get on a boat that you know you have a washing machine, central heating, solid fuel fire and you know a really nice bathroom and shower. And so we thought let's buy a narrowboat. This is our narrowboat Morning Star. She's 57 feet long, 6 foot 10 wide. The shell is made of stainless steel and was built by Tyler Wilson in Sheffield. And then the actual boat was completed by a company called Bickerstaff Narrowboats in Liverpool. We're really happy with the build of the boat. It's got everything that we need. We enter the boat from the stern and three steps down into what we call our galley or kitchen. Stainless steel sink, oak worktops, and a small fridge that goes under the counter and that's 12 volt and then we've got a dinette which is the heart of the boat really for us because we sit there with friends we play cards we have our meals here and also the table drops and this converts into a double bed for guests a sofa and a morsel squirrel solid fuel stove where we can burn smokeless coal and logs and a full-size shower. Even though we lived in a big house, this shower is the same size as the one that we have in the house. Full-size shower. And we did lots of research and went for a compost toilet, so a compost toilet. And this is our bedroom. We've got a fixed double bed, a full-size double bed. You can get pull-out versions of these, but we prefer to have less hassle and just be able to make the bed up every day and not worry about it. We've got two portal windows in the bedroom and we do have bungs for these that completely block out the light, so it's really dark in the morning. We've got cupboards up above the bed and we've got the wardrobe in the corner, which we did have to downsize our wardrobe, but you know, you just manage, don't you? And we've got drawers under the bed as well. And I have got my computer in here, but very rarely use it. And then we've got the doors that go out to the bow. And we've also got um, storage in the step. We've got four solar panels at 125 watts each. So that's giving us 500 watts of solar. We've got a 43 horsepower Vetus engine and we've got three lead acid batteries and we've recently installed a lithium battery and it's been a real game changer for us. We used to have to run the engine for five or six hours before the batteries would build up to float but now we can be cruising for an hour and the battery can be up to 100% so that's amazing for us and we can go five or six days without having to run the engine and have enough power to last that amount of time. 
our water is supplied by the Canal and River Trust because we get a license for the year and the cost of that license depends on the length of the boat and the width of the boat. Our license is about a thousand pounds a year just over that. That gives you services so you can go along the canal and get to a service point, you can get rid of your rubbish, get your water. We have a 500 litre water tank and that normally lasts us about two weeks and as I said we can fill that up at the service points. We've also got uh, a wireless router with a SIM card that we use for our Wi-Fi and we've got a, a Wi-Fi aerial on the roof of the boat. When it comes to cost of boats, like everything at the moment, prices have shot up haven't they? Because the price of steel has increased, the price of supplies has increased. Our boat itself is now selling for £175,000, yeah. although we didn't pay that much has actually gone up in value which is quite unusual. I think the cost of a narrowboat compared to homes in the UK is quite a lot cheaper would you say? Yeah the initial purchase of it is cheaper and if done right mm -hmm. the cost of living is definitely cheaper and I know people argue that you know boat stands for bring out another thousand <laughs> and, and that can be the case I guess but if you maintain your boat well mm -hmm and stay out on the cut because I think you can get a lot of extra added cost when you're going into marina because it can be expensive. I think nowadays for people to try and get on the housing market it's really hard I think for sort of younger people with cost of living going up and stuff like that so I think people are starting to use narrowboats as a, a cheaper way of living. So I work yeah. in the healthcare profession in GP surgeries. I'm a sonographer. I work from the boat, so I do art, we've got our YouTube channel and we have patrons. For me, the ideal lifestyle would be on the boat, doing my artwork, being able to trade from the boat and sell artwork at the side of the boat and occasionally I do magic shows at the weekend. So the YouTube channel is called Narrowboat Life Unlocked and it follows our adventures from the build of the boat, the selling of the house mm -hmm. and then travelling the UK network. I don't think I have any regrets living on the boat, do you? No, 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 not at all. I think we panicked when we were first selling the house because we yeah. kept saying, you know, we sell this house, we're not going to get this type of house again. And would we get back on the property ladder? Yeah, so it's a concern, but actually, now we've done it, we don't have any regrets at all. We wish we'd done it long, like sooner, didn't we? But yeah, from, you know, with the risk of sounding cheesy, you've got one life, live it. It can be hard because, for example, when you have to fill the boat with water and you've got to start up the engine and travel for miles and maybe turn your boat round before you then get to a water point. And a, a, quite a daily challenge, really. You, you know, you can get rubbish that's blown into the canals for whatever reason yeah. and you get it trapped around your prop. You can get fishing lines. Yeah, but then the worst thing that got trapped around the prop was a full-size tyre and it took us two days to get that tyre off, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. We've had times where we thought, Oh, the boat was listing really bad in a really shallow canal called the Huddersfield Narrow and yeah. you thought the boat was going to sink, didn't you? Yeah, because it was at like a really, really steep angle. Yeah, there has been occasions where boats have sank going into locks or being in locks and it's so easy for the water to pour in the back and get into the boat. Going from living in a house to a boat, there are certainly some challenges but I would say that living on the boat far outweighs the challenges that we experience. Yeah. The thing we really, really enjoy the most about living on the boat is the fact that you're immersed in nature. Living on a boat has taught us to slow down, hasn't it? Yeah. And such a slow pace of life, the boat travels at about four miles an hour, which is about walking pace, and to appreciate the nature and to listen to the bird song. I think one of the other things that it certainly taught me as well is when we sold the house and we cleared it out, and it, it's quite obscene the amount of stuff you collect, and I think one thing it's definitely taught me is that um, material things definitely are important. We're more selective about what we want on the boat. I think at this stage, I can't imagine um, going back to a house. So for now, I would say this is our long-term housing solution, but who knows what the future brings. As long as we can do it, we plan to carry on doing yeah. it. And everyone that we've spoken to who lives on a boat said they could never imagine going back to dry land. Yeah. I think that's the same for us because it's just been such a fantastic experience. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also follow Paul and Anthony on YouTube at Narrowboat Life Unlocked. Thanks for watching.